Hi, it's me, Liz, again. I'm back with all my fun stuff to do. <laughs> We're going to be talking about Litha, kind of the history behind it, some things to do, anything I can pop, pretty much think of. Um, it is celebrated on June 21st or whenever the summer solstice is on your calendar. You have to look it up because I don't have a calendar with me and I'm not going to go looking. I'm kind of lazy tonight. <laughs> but it can vary between the 20th and the 23rd usually. Somewhere right around there. Um, it is one of the more minor holidays that is celebrated. Um, this is when the day is at its peak and its most strength, so therefore it is also when the god, it, you know, you go the god and goddess, the god is at its strength and is most powerful. Um, it's kind of just celebrating, you know, that summer is coming to an end more or less, the days are getting shorter. Um, it's not quite a harvest festival because that's Lamas, but it, you know it's getting closer to that. That's why it's kind of minor because it's 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 kind of uh, very similar to Beltane. It's about fertility and abundance and you know all that stuff. But you're still kind of celebrating the fact that it is coming to an end too. Um, it's kind of an in between <laughs> festival, I guess. Um, Let's see if I can think of any other things. It's it's really ba simply basic. I mean, you know, think about what that day entails. You know, it's the longest day, so celebrate things that have to do with that, you know, that it's midsummer. And a lot of times you'll find that um, it has to do with fairies a lot. Sometimes I think because of Shakespeare's A Midsummer Night's Dream. Um, so there's lots of times that if you're a fairy fanatic like I am, you can do certain activities that are geared towards that, such as leaving food out for the fairies. Um, usually you leave it anywhere near a tree or a grouping of mushrooms where they were believed to congregate. Um, so it depends on what you believe. There are two beliefs. Mainly one of them is this is when um, God is at its peak, so he has reached manhood. Hold on. <coughs> I hit something. Um, the other one is the Holy King and the Holy, the Oak King, sorry, and I believe, um, they battle at Yule, and this is the repeating fight, which is reenacted at Midsummer, and this is the time that the Holy King, as the King of the Waning Year, is victorious, so the Holy King, uh, rules for this part of the year, and then at Yule, the Oak King rules again. This is basically, they fight all year round. And, you know, I mean, if you think about it, it, it kind of makes sense, <laughs> I guess. But I'm, I don't really subscribe to that as much. I mean, I, I know it. I understand it. I even to a little bit. But I tend to go more with the God and Goddess story. So, I guess it just depends. Um... Some of the things to decorate with um, is there are symbols such as the solar disk, which is just the disk of the big sun that you see a lot of times, mistletoe, feathers, and blades. I'm not sure you'd want to put blades around if you got kids, though. Um, some of the colors are green, gold, and yellow. Um, summer colors, of course. Um, some of the herbs to burn, especially, is chamomile. Quick foil, which I'm not exactly sure if I'm pronouncing it right. Elderflower, fennel, lavender, mugwort, thyme, and vervin. Um, some of them to be decorated with are hemp. No, do not burn hemp. Just saying. I'm not subscribing to burning hemp. Decorate with it only. Larkspur, pine, rose, St. John's wort, and wisteria. Again, don't burn the hemp. I'm going to keep repeating that. I am not a subscriber to doing drugs, so don't burn it. If you want to, I don't want to hear about it. I don't want to hear, oh, I had great midsummers. We burned hemp and it was great. I don't care. 
I really don't care. <laughs> um, this is when, you know, like I said, you know, the goddess is at heavily pregnant. She's, you know, getting close to giving birth, and the god is at his, you know, greatest. He's a man now, and you know, so that's where that kind of goes. Um, let's see. Some of the activities you can do for Litha is, um, they have some suggestions, and I'll put this site up on there. It's kind of good. It's got more activities. Uh, the site I gave you for Beltane still applies. It still has lots of good stuff. Um, they have making, um, taking a sprig of rowan and rue and three flowers of St. John's wort uh, and binding them together with a red thread and hanging them over the door. Um, making ambulance, sorry, amulets of protection um, out of herbs and any, and in case any of you don't know what an amulet is, it's just a charm. Um, I'm sure you all know, <laughs> but if you don't, um, and, it, and then you can make new amulets every year and the old amulets you can put in a bonfire called the Midsummer Fire, just like with Beltane. Lots of times they have uh, bonfires with them. You make uh, psychic pouches for dreams. Um, they have one where it's called a solar wheel, um, a witch's ladder, which I found on many different sites. It seems to be an old tradition. Um, it's basically braiding uh, three pieces of colored yarn together, um, usually red, black, and white for the triple goddess, and then weaving uh, le uh, feathers in. I wanted to say leaves. That was wrong. Um, so that's another one. You can... If you make a, a, a Yule wreath every year, you can burn it um, in the fire, in the bonfire you make. Um, I mean, it's got tons of stuff that you can do. You know, like I said, you can feed the fairies. You can gather herbs. This is a great time to start gathering your herbs and drying them. Um, it is you know, any, you know, it says, uh, soak thyme in olive oil and lightly anoint your eyelids to see fairy folk at night, so you can feed them and see them too. Um, you know, I mean, there's lots of things to do, and there's lots of activities you can do. If you really think about what it means to you, you can incorporate your own activities in it, so there are some activities, some decorations, and hopefully that helps a little bit. Like I said, the best I can say is, you know, read as much as you want. Incorporate the, the activities and stuff that you want in it and and discard the ones you don't. And as you can tell, I'm not saying rituals. I'm not telling you what rituals to do because that's up to you. It's completely up to you. You have to feel comfortable with the ritual you're doing. Otherwise, it will not feel real to you. So you pick the rit ritual or you make up your own ritual and that's what you follow. Um, it's, Wicca is so diverse and so bending that you can do almost anything to celebrate. If you want to stay home and read to celebrate, stay home and read. As long as you do it within, you know, with the thought of, of celebrating, you know. I really don't think there's a wrong way to celebrate. And that's why a lot of mine are fluid and, and and don't really give you a, this, you do this, 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 because I don't believe there really is a perfect way to celebrate Midsummer's or Beltane or Soween. I mean, there's some activities that you can do, you make up your own, and it's completely up to you. But since you guys asked for it, there it is. <laughs> and I know I'm long-winded. Um, so I will let you go so I don't run over. Have a good Midsummer's if I don't make a video before then. And I'll see you later. Bye.